Well, let me just say, by start by clarifying as far as Mark Greenberg goes, I mean no ill will, no animosity or acrimonious hostility toward him as I progress with my favorable <laughs> insight and in characterization of Michael Lewis Golick, or simply as one half of the team of the Mike's listening extravaganza that is Mike and Mike. Now I know Mike Greenberg, and he is a friend. And when I say he's a friend, I mean that I'm sitting in the same vicinity, vicinity as him as at this current juncture, but I digress. <laughs> This dissertative verbal essay is supposed to be about positive attributes, qualities, characteristics of Mike Golick, the quintessential everyman. A man who, according to the Dan Levitard program right here on ESPN Radio, is like the guy on a construction site with plumbers crack working on a sewage pipe and yelling, <laughs> I need some light down here. He's you. He's me. Well, he's not me. There's nobody who's me. But he's like so many great, hardworking American people. He's also a man who's proficient in professional athletic experience having been in the trenches of the National Football League for 115 games, compiling three sensational interceptions. I don't care what John Madden said. And in his eight-year tenure with the Oilers, Eagles, and Miami Dolphins, compiled almost 12 entire sacks. <laughs> This is a man who's not afraid to get his hands dirty. Now, speaking of getting your hands dirty, I have to say, I believe in cleanliness. But anyone who takes it to the extreme that Mike Greenberg does, where he would actually wash a bar of soap before using it, <laughs> is at a level of anal retentiveness that my cerebral cortex has trouble contemplating insanity. You can't tell me that if you had to choose to eat a meal at one of their homes, you wouldn't go with the barbecue delights of the... Uh, an assortment of baked goods you could be found at the Golick home as opposed to the carrot sticks and celery assortment found at the Greenberg Dome South. <laughs> now, in some ways, they need each other. Gold, Golick's Yang to Greenberg's Yen. The Oscar Madison to his Felix Un Unger. The Chewbacca to his Han Solo. The Pinky to his Brain. The Silent Bob to his Jay. The Garfunkel to his Simon. The Lenny to his George. The Ernie to his Bert. Not all of these are positive. And last but not least... <laughs> The Patrick to a SpongeBob. You know, come to think of it, after having pondered this great conundrum of Aquarius, and I pontificate before you, my greatest realization that as much as I like Golick and Greeny, uh, they're very little bit. In the end, I really don't like either of you that much at all. The difference is microscopic in nature. It's a round in air, a speck of sand in the infinite that is this great universe. And in the end, the secret after the credits end, when the 99% of the audience has already left the theater, I'd be more. It'd be much more favorable to me finishing off Mike and Mike at a decade and a half and replacing it with the Stephen and Stephen show. So you're listening to Stephen A. and Stephen B. right here on ESPN Radio. <laughs> <laughs>